your goodness is running after us, Lord. And your grace is upon us, and we are so privileged to know you this morning. So we love you, Lord, dearly. Out of our hearts and in our minds, our strength, everything belongs to you, Lord. We honor you. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah means bless the Lord or praise the Lord. Yeah, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. It's the Lord. All right. Praise the Lord. So thank you for being with us this morning. And um, yes, I just feel led by the Spirit to speak about the order of the eye. Now, the moment when we um, speak of the orders of God, it means it's a way of the Lord. It cannot change and He will not change. There's no change in the Lord. He's the same yesterday, today, forever. All right. And nothing can change it. It means that grace and mercy cannot change the Lord. Think on it. He was gracious and merciful then since the beginning. If he is now gracious and merciful. All right. He never changed. It's not that God the Father is this angry God. And Jesus is this sweet God. He's going to help us. All right. It's not like that. Jesus is the exact imprint of God the Father. And if he, Jesus is grace and mercy and love and truth. Then the Father is also like that. All right. So the order of God is the way how God will do things. It is order. Now, two things in the Bible that are very important. You get, you get nowadays Bibles that will show the two things. And that is prose and poetic. Poetic. All right. So in Afrikaans is prosa and poesie. Prosa, prosa, or prose is when it's like an opstel. What is an opstel? An essay. You know, God will say what he thinks, and he wants to write that down to you. You can know exactly. Oh, this is what God is thinking. You need to think the same way. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. It's straightforward. But poetry is poetry. It is Words a little bit nice and deep. It's, it's awesome. It's sweet. And songs is most of the time poetry. We can remember poetry much better than prose. That's why we're singing. All right. Poetry. So the whole Bible is full of poetry. And poetry is very deep. It speaks of God's heart. And there is Bibles that are coming out now that will show you the difference. Because you need to know when you read it, is this prose or is this something about God's heart? All right. Poetry can touch your spirit, your soul, and your body. Because when you sing, singing in the rain, for singing in the rain, you feel lacquer. So you're singing. You can feel physical, emotionally very nice. But if you sing a bad song, uh, Oh, who Lord, what have I ever done? <laughs> then, huh? Why me, Lord? You know, sometimes things come in your way and you say, Why me, Lord? And then, oh boy, you know, and there's terrible songs. It can touch you. So, poetry. It's very important to understand it. It can touch your spirit, soul, and mind. And what we need to know is when poetry in the Hebrew way is written down. All right, it's this way. The first sentence, you need to know this, is important. The second sentence is a, a little bit deeper than the first sentence. But it's the same thought. All right, 
So in Hebrew literature and poetry, they love to repeat things. But they want, they want not only to repeat it like we will say in English a poetry, you know. What they say? Nice thing, you know. It was rhyme, rhythm. What is rhyme? Rhyme. All right. There's no really rhyme in Hebrew where the Bible is written in an Old Testament or Greek. But they will say something and then they will repeat it, but more emphasis and a little bit deeper. So you remember what I've said now? Hello. So you're all right? Okay. Thank you. Let's go to Matthew 6, verse 22, and I speak about the order of God. This order will stand forever and ever. From the beginning it was like this, and it will be like that. God will not change this. Matthew 6, verse 22, and I have a, a man part this morning, so I will do it like this. Only a few scriptures, don't worry. All right. A man part and a God part. Listen here, I'm going to read slow to you because you need now to understand poetry. It says deeper. It's not just uh, straight. It says, the light of the body is the eye. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye is single, thy whole body shall be full of light. You can hear, it's deep. All right, so what your eye behold is very important because it can bring light to your whole being. Everything you do, is in light or do you want to walk in darkness because in darkness you stumble so what you see is very important is it true the eye is of the body the light and it needs to be single so very important light and singleness is now connected to each other single it means single. That Greek word is aplus. Aplus. All right? Listen. Single means in union. Or folded together. Your eyes must be folded together. Or be in union. Because you have two eyes. That means the one eye can check that way, and this will eye, some guys is looking like this. <laughs> All right, one eye can check that way, and this eye can check that way. So Jesus is speaking here, and he's giving us a key. He wants us to be single eyed. The eyes must be in union and folded together, that Greek word, a hop loose. 23. But if thy eye be evil, the whole body shall be full of darkness. So, in the first scripture, it speaks of single. In our second verse, it speaks of evil. Now, do you think, listen, look to me. Do you think that the opposite of single is evil? In English, no. So can you see? It, this is much deeper. God wants to say something. In union, your two eyes must be in union, joined together, and single focus. One focus. If it's not one focus, it's evil. We will never put, we will put good and evil against each other. But in this scripture, when Jesus speaks, he wants to say, if something is not straightforward, single, it's evil. That Greek word, I want to read that as well for you. Pampon aios. 
Fapon Airos. <laughs> Greek word. All right. Listen what is that Greek word saying. In effect or influence. So I'm going to read now that. But if the I is influenced. We, we know what evil is, but forget what evil is. This Greek means influence. I want you to be single-eyed. If you are not single-eyed, you are evil. What is this evil? When your eye is influenced. Differing from original virtue. Differing. That's the word, deferring from original virtue. That Greek word means differing from original virtue. So we know what evil is, but forget what evil is. For the Lord is singled eye, one eye, focus in union. Do you hear the words that I'm speaking? It's good. And then everything in your body and in your life will be of light. But if your eye is evil, that does not mean I'm looking to naked girls and uh, look to bad, evil stuff. No, no, no. It means deferring from virtue. And it means influence. So your single eye must not be influenced. So I need to write that down. In flu flu words. That's a switch. Influence. Okay. Let's say that's the Spanish. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. So it must not be influence. Let's go. Hebrew 12, verse 1. It must not be influence. Not being influence. Hebrew 12, verse 1 and 2 says this. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such great cloud of witnesses, there is a cloud, there is people surround us that die, that is with the Lord, that went for us, they surround us. Let us throw off everything that hinder and the sin that so easily entangles us. Let's throw off the things that entangle us. So here's a Christian guy. And there's things that can entangle us. And let us throw off the sin that entangles us. All right. By how? How are we going to do it? And let us run with perseverance the race that is marked for us. But let us fix our eyes on Jesus. The author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured of the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So you need to look now here to me. Yeah, the God part. Yet yeah, Jesus is walking before the cross. He stands in his three and a half years of ministry and he looked unto that. This verse says, let us fix our eyes now upon him. And then it speaks something about him. Watch here. Look yet as I'm reading it. He's the author, the beginner, the author, the creator, and the finisher of our faith. But let's our fix our eyes on him. Fix. It must, there must not be a drop. Fix your eyes on him. 
for the joy that was set before him. The cross was a joy, was set before him. He endured the cross. He endured that cross. Scorning its shame before him. And sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So that side is the throne of God and Jesus is sitting there on the throne. Jesus looked steadfast to this cross with joy. And he is now sitting on the throne because, listen, he is sitting on the throne. It means he's ruling because of this thing. All right. Let us then fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Psalm 100. And three, one, verse three. I'm almost finished with our part. <laughs> so, in the I've said to you in the New Testament a word, evil, and then I spoke about the Greek word. And I say to you, you, if God says a single eye is good, and if it's not single, it's evil. It doesn't mean evil in what we, but what I've said. It differs from the original. And it in actually, it speaks of then two things. And not one thing. Because single is union. And if it's not single in union, it is more than one. Is it true? All right. Now, this is a Hebrew word, and it is in Old Testament, and it's in the Psalms. 101 verse 3. I will set no wicked thing, there's that word, before mine eye. I hate the work of them that turn aside, it shall not cleave to me. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. 101. That Hebrew word means without profit. I will not, I will set no Wicked thing in Hebrew, it, I will not set my eyes on a thing that has no profit for me. Another word is worthlessness. Another word is destruction. So, I will not set my eyes on Destruction, all right, destruction on worthless all right, and no profit for me. It does not prove profit us. This means, what is that Hebrew word? Wicked. So when I say to you wickedness, you know what you, oh, wicked must be bad. All right. But do you think that the word wickedness in Hebrew will mean destruction? I will not set my eyes on destruction. Mia, <laughs> you will not think this way. No worthlessness. It has no worth. Nor profit for me. So what is the Lord saying here? <laughs> there is wickedness and, and the other word was evil. It's two words that we are looking onto that we can miss. 
because when I was speaking English and I was saying, don't be evil and don't be wicked, you will think it's a bad guy and it's wicked. But in the Greek and the New, in the New Testament and the Hebrew and the Old Testament, it's a little bit different. This can happen actually easy to us. Where your eyes is focused on destruction. And for the Lord, it's wickedness. And your eyes is focused on things worthless. It's wickedness. And your eyes is focused on no profit for you. It's wickedness. Can you see it? But your eyes must be single, fixed on Jesus. All right. Psalm 16 verse 8 says, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. That was the last scripture of my part. Listen how this guy says now. Yeah, Psalm 16 verse 8. It's poetry. I will set the Lord always before me. You must set the Lord before you. Before you. This is an order of God that he will not change. He does not want you to look to destruction. He does not want you to look to things that is worthless. He does not want you to look to things that's not no profit for you. And that is wickedness for him. And in the Greek, evil or do. Because single eye will bring light to the whole body, means to your whole life. I wonder why there is suffering and darkness in some places in our life. Then. Because Jesus would say, if your eyes are single, the whole body will be light. But if it's evil, deferring from virtue, who is virtuous, Jesus Christ, set your eyes upon him. I have set the Lord before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. I shall then not be moved. First Samuel 16 verse 7, and I'm going this side from God's side. 1 Samuel 16 verse 7. First Samuel 16 verse 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance. So Samuel need to get a new king for Israel. <laughs> or on the height of the stature, of this stature, of his stature. Because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as a man seeth. The Lord seeth not like a man seeth. For a man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord look on the heart. We love to look outside. We love to look on things around us. We love to look to things. We love to look on calamity and distractions and storms. And people and money. All those things is worthless and actually in God's eye a distraction 
that will bring a suffering and the darkness in your whole body or to your life because of your eye. All right, so he says, the Lord looketh in the heart. So the Lord looketh a little bit different than what man looketh. The man looked to outward appearances always. I can see that guy is muscular. Hey, it must be a good husband. Because listen, the, the ladies, that's a 17, 18 years of age. When you are maybe 30, 35, you have wisdom and think, uh, Outer appearance is not so. The heart is very important. Well, that is this guy loving me? Not just what's that muscles. All right. So the Lord looks differently what man is looking. First Peter 3 verse 12. I'm going to read that to you. It is a psalm, but I'm going to read it in the New Testament because I have a Greek word to explain to you. First Peter 3. For 12. First Peter 3, verse 12. Listen, the eye of the Lord are over the righteousness, are over the righteousness. That over, I'm going to explain that to you. And his ears are open unto their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And I will explain the face as well. First, the eye is over you. That Greek word is epi. Epi. The eye of the Lord is over you. It's upon you. So yeah, I'm look, walking. The eye of the Lord is upon me. It's over me. The eye of the Lord's over me. Can you see here yeah, I'm walking? And over me is the eye. Poetry, remember, poetry is deep. The eye of the Lord is over me. It sounds good, eh? Can you see? It's upon me. It's towards me. The eye of the Lord is towards me. It rests on me. It's above me. It's after me. As long as touching, it's beside me. As long as it's touching me, it's touching me. The eye of the Lord is touching me. So, did you see that in your spiritual eyes? The eyes of the Lord is upon me, it's over me, it's touching me, it's next to me. The eye of the Lord. Remember, we speak about the order of God. He will not change this. All right? So, it's, uh, let me read the Greek again. First Peter 3 verse 2. For the eyes of the Lord is over that word that we have spoken now. The righteous and his ears are open to their prayer. But the face of the Lord, what is this face of the Lord? Is against the evil. God's favorable presence. So the moment when we speak about the face of God, we speak of his favorable, it's favorable. Favor able. Favorable is favorable presence. So the guy that does evil has not a favorable presence of God over him. But the eye of the Lord needs to be upon you. I have set the Lord before me. I will be one single focus. I will set my eyes on Jesus, the finisher, the author and the finisher. 
I will not move my eyes from him. His eyes will be toward me. Listen to his eyes. You need to hear and see that with eyes. Because I'm going to show you something. His eyes. All right? But the evil guy, God's face, his favorable presence is against you. Verse, Psalm 34, verse 16. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. Who ever thought of this? If people remember you, it's an awesome blessing. We never think on this. If people remember you, these guys, many years, 50, 60 years already gone. Some are 13, 14 years. We are still speaking of them. That's a blessing. That's a blessing for us and a blessing for those people. God, bless them this way. There is a deep blessing in this, what we do not know anything about. But it will be an awesome blessing for you if man can remember you. Because the Bible says, the face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off their remembrance from the earth. So everyone has a good um credit card, banking account, and some have a credit account. And we do not know how God will reward us. But I'm telling you, there is something about this remembrance thing. Because your remembrance is taken out of the way when you are an evil man. There is a reward. That, that's a bad reward. This is a deep thing what we do not know anything about. But let me tell you, it's very good if I'm still speaking about Wigglesworth. The guy's already 70, 80 years already gone in the clouds. And people still speaking about him. It's awesome. Genesis 6 verse 8. You can go to Psalm 32. I'm just going to read Genesis 6 verse 8. And then my last scripture is Psalm 32. Genesis 6 verse 8 says, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. <laughs> All right. Poetry. I want you to look to me. Watch here. Here's the eye of the Lord. And Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Figuratively, you know what it means. But I want you not think that figuratively. It means God will give grace. Listen, poetry is deeper. And Noah found favor or grace in the eyes of the Lord. That means you need to stare in the eyes. Look into the eyes. Oh, he found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Can you hear that? Do you see it? You cannot see my eyes if you are at the back. But when you are in front of me and you look me fully in the eye, you can see my eyes. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. It means he stared in. Noah had to stare in, in the eyes of God to have found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Listen, I'm one scripture. I hope you can see what I'm saying. 
I hope you can see what I'm saying. Because it's an order that will never change. If you are behind me, you cannot look me in the eyes. Your favor is in the face of God. Looking in his eyes. Let's read this and then I say what I need to say. Psalm 32 verse 7 and 38. What did I start off by saying? Hebrew literature, poetry means the first is the important thing. And the second thing is a repetition of and a little bit deeper of the first thing. You know that. All right. So. I've said to you that man and God looks different. God looks to the inner. Man looks to the outer. And God doesn't want us to look outer. He wants to be singled-eyed and not be influenced. Because when you look to something else, you are influenced. And if you are influenced and you look to destruction of worthless things, or things that has no profit, it is wickedness and will bring evil into your life. Where does wickedness and evil come into? Because of your focus. But set your eyes upon Jesus, the beginning and the finisher of your faith. Like he set his eyes upon the cross. And afterwards went and sat on the throne. God says, if you put your eyes upon me, you can have actually then where I'm sitting there on the throne. Look to hear this word. Psalm 32 verse 7. First line is very important. You are my hiding place. So I'm speaking now about what? Oh, yeah, it's God, but he's a hiding place. Is that the first line? You remember what I said? Listen. Thou art my hiding place, thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Hello. That means the second line says a little bit more of the first line. The Lord is your hiding place. Then you shall be preserved or kept from trouble. Thou shalt compass me. Thou, thou is God, shall compass, it means surround me, about with songs of deliverance. First what? God is my Hiding place. Let's keep the second line. Look here. God is my hiding place. The third line speaks about the first line. Hebrew poetry. God is my hiding place. What shall compass or surround me? Songs of deliverance. What is then the hiding place? Songs of deliverance. Huh? God is my hiding place. Then, it says secondly, He will preserve me from trouble. But how? Oh, the third thing. He will compass me, surround me with songs of deliverance. So the moment when we are focused one eye on the Lord and we sing songs of deliverance. We are in God's hiding place and trouble cannot found us. Listen verse 8. Because it speaks of the same thing. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. 
the Lord will instruct thee and teach thee the way that you shall go. I will guide thee with my eye. So, look, you, you need to look to me. All right, don't write now. Look to me. You need to stand right before the Lord. Actually, that one Greek word says against, touching. All right? And then you need to look him in the eye. And his eyes is over you, upon you, to instruct you and lead you. Not with his mouth, with his eyes. And I will guide thee with my eye. That means when you are in God's face, his favorable presence, you look him in the eye and the Lord will say, you know you go left. If he says, then you, you stop. You stop. Because you look at me, his eyes will guide you. Or, dan weet jy, oh oh, nou het ek moe aangejaag. <laughs> it's angry eyes. His eyes will instruct and guide you. Not his voice, and not his, because you can put Someone here in front of me, and I can look that way, and I can see when this person is moving. But when this guy stands, I can maybe walk against him. All right, and he can do this with his hand, and maybe in a, in a so I'm I'm focusing on this, but I'm also focusing on that, and that's not good. But if I stare God face to face and I look him in the eye, that means I must be constantly, I cannot look away. Because if he does this, or, hey, do you want some water? And he does that, I can miss him. Hello. Can you see why the eye of the Lord? Because you need what is the significance of the eye of the Lord? It means you must be very focused. When you, if the Lord's presence is with me, I can walk and I can miss him. And he can say things and I cannot listen and I can just, because my eyes is upon the ladies and sinful world, but yes, the Lord is walking. I can see he's moving, but the Lord doesn't, instruct and lead me that way. He wants to guide me through his eyes. That means it's a very closely constant looking. It's a deep thing. It's a connection. It's a deep connection when his eye is saying or or But Noah found grace in the eyes of God. Noah found grace in the eyes of God. Can you see what I'm saying? Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass about with songs of deliverance. I will instruct and teach thee in the way that Thou shalt go. I will instruct thee. How? I will guide thee with my eyes. It's a close thing because if we have not this close relationship, our eyes is constantly set on Jesus Christ. We can miss it. It's a... What did Jacob say? It's a connection, but the very close connection and his eyes will then if your eyes is set upon him and does not look unto worthless things 
destruction that's around us, storms of life, finances, things that has no profit really, because all these things is actually a second thing with Christ. Huh? It's deviant. Yeah. And it's evil and it's wicked in God's eyes. God wants you to look unto him, set your eyes upon him, and only following him. Focus on him. Because he says, I will focus on you. And we will found grace in the eye of the Lord. Like Noah found grace in the eye of the Lord. <laughs> his eyes is over me. But his face is against the evil one. That means the evil one cannot see. So Jesus is communicating with us through his eyes. Jesus is communicating, God is communicating with his people through his eyes, his face, not his body. There's many people that can come in the presence of God and still miss it. You need to be constantly focused. Ain't this awesome? What uh, this last song, uh, if this is the hiding place. Listen, this is the hiding place. And then it says, the hiding place is songs of deliverance. And then the first verse says, um, the eye will guide me. Well, what is the hiding place of God truly? The eye of the Lord. You cannot look away. You cannot look to anything else except Him. And speak then actually of Him. Because the moment when you speak, you surround you with songs of deliverance. Why does people have suffering and darkness in their body? Because their eye is not single. Be blessed. I know it's deep, but it, you can understand. Amen. Amen. Thank you.